This is John Cressman with MonkeyUncle.com, and this is part two of our platformer tutorial. If you've been following along since part one, you should already have uh, the bases that we'll be working with. If not, you feel free to download uh, project one from our website, MonkeyUncle.com. Now, to do this, you'll also need to go to Kenny. That's K. E N N E Y dot N L, and you're going to need to download. If you click on assets and 2D, you're going to need to download this platformer Redux pack. You'll also want to go to the UI and click on the game icons, and you'll want to download this as well. And I just like to. Uh, Put them on my desktop but you can put them wherever you feel comfortable once you're done that you're ready to go today we're going to be talking about adding on screen controls now last time we added keyboard controls but obviously that's not going to help somebody playing a mobile game you need on screen controls or you need to be able to uh, control it with some other device like a um, joystick so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here to home and the first thing I'm going to do actually I'm going to file and I'm going to save as platform tutorial 002. We're going to create three actors. I'm going to call the first one button left. Next one button right. And the third one, button jump. Now you could also say button one, button two, button X if you want to coordinate it to the controller. Um, whatever you want to do. There's usually button X, button Y, button A, button B, and then the directional buttons. So in this case, we're going to come over here to button left. We're going to go ahead and make this size. I'm going to set it to 64 by 64. We're going to come under game icons, which you should have downloaded. Under PNG. Under white. We're going to go ahead and you can go 1x or 2x. It doesn't really matter. But you notice that he'll have, he has arrow right, arrow left. You want to take the arrow left and drag it over to the image. There we go. And now while we're here, we're going to go ahead and add the rule. It's a really simple rule. When the actor receives a touch, we're going to add a second condition. And when that touch is inside, we'll just change this to so when they touch this left button, we're going to change attribute, game, and again you should have created these in episode one, button left, true, true. Otherwise, we're just going to alt or option and click and drag, we're going to change this to false. So when they press it, we want to set button left to true. When it's not being pressed, we want to set it to false. Let's go back to home. We're going to go over to button right. We're basically going to do the same type of thing. We're going to go here to this arrow right. We're going to drag it over. Actually, before we do that, let's set the size. Size 64 by 64. And now let's drag the right arrow over and we're going to create the rule when it receives a touch add the extra condition and when the touch is inside we want to change attribute and of course this time it's game button right will be true 
and Alt Option, click and drag. And otherwise, it will be false. Now let's go over to our button jump. We're going to change the size to 64 by 64. We're going to come in our game icons. Now he's got a lot of different buttons here. We're just going to use this as button one. So now we have our button. I'm going to create a rule, and we're going to say when touch is pressed and touch is inside. Again, we're going to change attribute, this time of course, I'm going to say game, button jump is true, otherwise Again, Alt or Option and drag. We're going to set it to false. Now I'm going to file, save. We're going to go home. So we have our three buttons here. Hard to see because it's white on white. Let's go to our scene. We're going to add them to our scene. So we're going to take button left and we're going to drag it down here. Button right and drag it over here and button jump and drag it to 128 so basically roughly double their size okay so I'm gonna go back to home go to actor let me go to button right do the same thing left so now let's go back to our scene and they should be bigger now let's just drag this one over a little bit there's our button one so file save remember save often we're gonna hit preview and there we go I'm moving it with the keys right now but if I click here, he goes right, click here, he goes left, press the one, and he jumps. Now, let's go into our scene. We're going to go into attributes. I actually need to click on the scene to see the scene attributes. We're going to look at the size, and right now the size is the width of the screen. In this case, we chose iPad, so it's 1024. Let's double this to 248, and that means that we're going to be able to scroll off the screen. So to notice how the screen is now twice as long. Let's take this bottom, and we're going to drag it all the way to the end. So now we have a floor. And let's take this and again, Alt or Option, click and drag. And uh, let's just make this one slightly different. And that way we have an idea. We do it again, the one up here at the top. Now we have an idea of, of where we're at in the scene. Okay. Now let's go ahead and take a look. Now we're going to go right, and you can see kind of part of it sticking out. We're going to go right, and oh, what happened? Hmm, good question. Why didn't the camera follow the player? Well, the reason is that there is actually a behavior called control camera. And if you, I suggest putting it at the top, I like to. We had to put this control camera on the player actor for the camera to follow him. Now if we come into scene, the other thing you have to do, or at least I'd like to do, let's go into scene and you can look at this camera size. 
I like to change this to actually I'm sorry let's actually just click here okay I clicked on this little camera icon and what you want to do is you want to drag this and basically notice how we're the tracking area is getting smaller you'll see a lot of people use it this way that's what I wanted to show you but you can actually just come in here in the tracking area and change I change it to 1 1 and it basically makes it small area and what that does is it makes it really follow the actor um, otherwise you get a little bit of lag sometimes so now I'm gonna save it let's go back to cursor so there we have it again I'm gonna use my click on the and oh wait what's going on did you see that our little arrows scrolled off the screen we don't want that do we now that get to take care of this what you're gonna have to do is go into the scene you go into scene and layers now right now everything is on this single background layer so we have to do two things one we have to create a new layer we're gonna call it HUD okay for a heads-up display and I'm just gonna drag it up and now what we have to do is we have to find these buttons that we just created and move them to this new layer okay. and I could demo this for you and in fact I, I go, I'll go ahead and do that for you just moving to that layer doesn't necessarily do anything as you'll see see how they still throw off what you have to do anything that you do not want to be scrolling along with the camera like for instance your controls your heads-up display you know score things like that you need to change this scrollable you need to click it off so it's false now if we go back we should see that even though I scroll off notice how the keys are scrolling with me now and that's what we want we want this for our controls we want it for our score uh, maybe lives or power things like that things that need to be on the screen all the time you want to put those on a separate layer and you want to make that layer non scrollable and that's it for this episode uh, that's how to put on screen controls and also uh, make them non scrollable if you have any questions please check us out at monkeyuncle.com or if you want to download the files at monkeyuncle.com remember file save